So you mean to tell me this 52-year-old woman not only paying for her 27, 24, 25-year-old boyfriend's life, she also paying for his wages? Y'all, I didn't hear that. Y'all lied to me. I know y'all lying. I know you lying. I just got, you know what? Welcome back to my channel, Sass here. I'm here for another 90 Day Fiance Child. But before I get into the review, BAM! Ain't this pillow cute? Let me show it to y'all. It says on Sundays we watch 90 Day Fiance. Ain't that cute? My homegirl got it for me. Honey, my bestest, my bestest, my bestest friend got me that. She said that she got it at Amazon. So I'm going to go on over to Amazon and get me another one. And then because, ain't that cute, y'all? Yes, sir. I'm going to get that one. I'm going to get love out the lock up, honey. Yes, honey. I love it. What y'all think about that intro? See, I didn't say nothing about that intro when I, you know, premiered it on, you know, Life After Lockup. Y'all seem to like it. Thank you. Okay? I love it. I really, really, um, like the intro. But anyway, child, let's get into this review. Child, let's talk about Stephanie. <sighs> Stephanie, she's at her spa. She got two, you know, beauty spas, honey. She doing well for herself. So she got her two cousins there. Now, with her treatments, one of her cousins done lost 80 pounds. So the other cousin said, well, let me go ahead and get on this weight loss track. One of the cousins is also pregnant. So, of course, you know, like any family member, they want to know what's going on in Stephanie's life. Now, Stephanie proceeds with a calm tone to tell them that she takes care of Ryan. Not only does she take care of Ryan, she takes care of the whole family. Because, see, they ain't got nothing. They ain't got a pot to piss in or a window to throw it out of. They ain't got nothing. They ain't got toilet paper. They ain't got paper towels. They ain't got tissues. They ain't got clothes. They ain't got food to eat. See, they just out there living hard. So it's up to Stephanie to send them $500 to $1,300 a month, U.S. dollars. So she can take care of Ryan and his family. Y'all don't hear me, church. If you hear me, make sure you type in amen. Stephanie. Now, y'all, friends, I want to ask you something. What's wrong with these women? First, we have Jiggle Net Jenny. Then we have Angela. And now we got Stephanie. What's wrong with these middle-aged, old, you know, a particular age white women out here paying for these young men to eat? And not only that, friends, she says that not only do she send them $500, $1,300 a month, she also paying Ryan's wages. I'm going to let y'all marinate on that for a minute. See, the resort where he work at, she has a connection. So she contacted said connection and said, look, can you get my little boyfriend a job? But see, they couldn't pay him. So she said, oh, don't worry about it. I'll pay his wages. Stephanie, what's right? You're a businesswoman. You're a businesswoman. What type of business is this? So her cousins is looking at her like she got two heads. What they call? If my cousin, my good, good cousin was to sit on back and tell me that, child. I'm like, girl, did you fall? Where'd you fall at? Where'd you fall at? Cause I have to 
see some blood. You done fell somewhere. You done lost your mind. You taking care of a grown boy and his family? She said, you know, he don't know that I paid for his wages. You know, this is like a self-esteem type of thing. What? <laughs> Stephanie, no, no, sweetie, no, no, mm -mm, no. So, of course, the cousins, all right, they have their concerns. They're like, we don't know about this, okay? We don't know about this. This sounds like Stephanie is a sugar mama child. She has built this business, and we don't want this boy taking advantage of her and, you know, taking all her money. Well, honey, that boy ain't doing nothing. Stephanie is giving him her money. Her own free will. Here, here, here are Ron's mama, cousins, uh, nieces, nephews, whoever. Talk about they having a hard time. Stephanie, honey, before you became in, before you came into the picture, how were they living? They were doing just fine before you. They would do just fine after you. Girl, you better quit giving them people that money. That's why that mama, Ron's mama, is all smiles and teeth when she talked to Stephanie. Child, I just don't understand. And then he won't answer your phone calls. You paying for his lifestyle and he don't answer. Let me tell you something. If I am sending him $500, $1,300 a month of my hard-earned money, it better not even get a full ring. It better be, hey, hey, baby, how you doing? You okay? Mm -hmm. It will be no not taking my phone calls and she don't even tell Ryan that she paying for his wages. What y'all think about Ryan and Stephanie, child? Now, honey, they tripped me out. What's wrong with them? Child, let's move on. All right, this is going to be short and sweet. Let's talk about Rebecca and Zed. Zed is on his way over to the United States. Can we talk about that airport? Honey, that airport was nice, wasn't it? I was like, ooh, that airport was nice. So, of course, Zed. All right, his family is seeing him off to the United States. And child, honey, they are crying, not flying. He is really, really close, you know, with his family. And, of course, they are, you know, upset that he's leaving. And that was, you know, sad because you always see the families, you know, they're upset. They don't know what's in store for their child. And, honey, Zan said that when he, when he get over to the United States, he said, Rebecca better take care of me. Don't you worry, she is. She got you a whole Xbox, a whole PlayStation, video games, honey. So, Rebecca, she let us know that she is not moving in with her daughter. She got her own place, honey. A little studio apartment. I ain't mad at it. Honey, I love me a studio apartment. Y'all see how big it is? It was just open. Just an open space. I love the uh, the brick. I love the industrial look. It looked a little, you know, beat down. But, honey, it ain't nothing I can't work with. I love it. Ooh, child, honey, just have, like, you know, like, modern-looking furniture. Honey, you have some folks up in there. You be, come on, dance. <laughs> honey, I would kill it in there. So she got her department. She said it's a little bit more expensive than where she used to live. But hey, it would be rather than, you know, living with her daughter. And then here she comes. She says, I think um, Zed will like this new apartment. But see, there's a little hiccup with it. Okay, the neighborhood's nice. The apartment's nice. But. See, this is where, you know, I live with my ex. Can we go through an episode without Rebecca bringing up her ex? Can we, y'all? Her ex, her ex, her ex, her ex. Now, her ex done lived in the same building that she got her apartment in. And Zed may have a problem with that. <laughs> Who cares? The ex ain't in the, ain't in the building. That was a long time ago. If Zan has a problem with that, child. 
Zed on his way, y'all. And Rebecca's aside. Did y'all see Rebecca and her confessional? Honey, her hair was all flat. I was like, Rebecca, you need to fluff that up a little bit, yeah? Fluff up that hair. Why is it flat, child? It looked like you just came in from the rain. <laughs> Let's move on, child. Y'all, bad, bad. Okay? Let's talk about Natalie. And let's talk about Mike. Side ditch, Washington, honey. Natalie having her hard time over at side ditch. Natalie has to clean. She's exhausted. Natalie done got bit by the um, cat. Natalie don't like the fireworks. It's scared of fish. Natalie got to change out the kitty litter that smell like 50-year-old piss. Honey, Natalie's just having a hard time. See, Mike, he had to go to work. And Mike is, you know, gone at like 5.30 in the morning. He don't come back till like 8 o'clock. So, she's at home, you know, by herself. And it just isn't what she thought it would be. The countryside. You know, either you cry, you know, in the city, it's much different. Here, she's by herself. She don't have her family. She don't have her friends. And it is an adjustment. It's some things that she has to get used to. It can only be so many times she can sweep a porch, honey. She says, this house cleaning, it is killing me. Girl, what? You didn't clean your house in Ukraine? What's going on here? Mike lived there by himself. Child, she had a hard time with the wash and dry. What about when she says, what's softener? What is this softener? And then she pulled down the bleach. I was like, girl. When she was about to pull the bleach in the house, I was like, girl, don't you do it. Don't you do it. She said, what is this softener? What is this bleach? <laughs> I bet you the producers was like, child, don't be, put that bleach back up there. Let me show you how it's done. <laughs> so, later on, you know, she, she meets up with Mike. Honey, Mike, honey, I can get down with Mike. I mean, not in like a romantic thing, but Mike looked like he liked to eat. <laughs> Mike liked to throw down, honey. Mike said, I love food. I said, I do too. I do too, honey. So they went to this restaurant, real nice restaurant, honey. And we come to find out that Natalie is a vegetarian. She don't eat meat. But she eat fish. But she don't eat meat. It's a full-blooded meat eater. He said, give me the tomahawk. <laughs> Did y'all see that big piece of meat? It reminded me of the Flintstones child. I said, you better eat it, honey. And honey, that food looked delicious, honey. Them Brussels sprouts, honey, they was touched by the Lord, honey. I said, oh, they look so good. Mashed potatoes look good. Her scallops look good. I was like, Natalie, shut up and eat. Put it in your mouth. That's some good food right there. So then she come talk about him meat eater. And she know how he feels about her, about him eating meat. He could, she could talk about, do you know how many people's lives was ruined? He said, lives? She said, yeah, animals' lives. He was like, oh, well, mm-hmm, I don't know, mm-hmm, I don't know, mm -hmm, no. I was like, Mike, you better eat it. Eat it in front of my face. I would went like this with the fork. Smell that. Smell that blood. See, you have parents. See, that's me. See, I want something on my plate that have parents. Okay? I want Bambi. I want Piglet. I don't care what it is. I want something on my plate that had a mother and a father. <laughs> so now she's whining about him being a whole meat eater. And how he needs to have a, you know, a healthier lifestyle. And how he needs to try to be a vegetarian. See, last season or whatever season they was on, it was him being an atheist. Now it's him being, I mean, you knew this. Now, is this the first time you realized that you was engaged or want to be married to a meat eater? Y'all go somewhere and sit down with that. You knew this. But now it's a problem. So Mike was like, listen, 
I'm tired of your mouth. So one week I'll be a meat eater. The next week I'll, you know, eat grass. One week meat, next week grass. Okay, shut your mouth. That's what I'm going to do. But see, I'm not going to change for you. You ain't going to tell me what I'm going to eat right on my, okay? Now, I'll compromise. I'll compromise, but you're going to be telling me that I can't be eating Bambi and Piglet because I like that, okay? I like cow. So, she's rolling her eyes. She didn't like that. So, they go out to dinner again. Okay, they went to like this brewery. They went to see, what was it, y'all was in a waterfall. It was beautiful. I tell you what, Side Ditch, Washington is gorgeous. So they go to this brewery and honey, let me tell you something. Some more good food, honey. So he got him a beer and she got some hot tea. See, that's another thing. See, he also liked his alcohol. She don't drink alcohol. She don't eat um, uh, meat. So, she's having a problem with the alcohol. Oh, so you're having a beer? Ooh. She's fussing and complaining about that. So, she got her a black bean burger. And let me tell y'all something. Black bean burgers done right, delicious. And honey, that brewery must have done it right. Because she says, now, wait a minute now. She says, is this, is this me? This looks like me. And so, he was like, no, nah, it's all good. It's black bean burger. She was like, this is delicious. <laughs> Honey, them fries was crisp, and that black bean burger was juicy. Honey, she was tired it up. And then here's Mike. Mike got him some brisket nachos, honey. She says, nachos? She was like, what's that? So Mike is like, child, it's just some delicious. She says, is there meat on it? He said, it sure is. She was like, oh, God. She said, you're supposed to not eat meat today. He said, now, wait a minute. Pop your brakes. You got confused. See, it's been some miscommunication. I did not say today. I said next week. She said, no, you didn't. You said today. He said, no, I didn't now. I said next week. She went. No, you didn't. <laughs> so they're fussing about when he going to become a vegetarian for a week, child. I was like, Natalie, please put another piece of uh, black bean in your mouth and shut up. <sighs> so, of course, she's upset because he's eating, again, meat. And she thinks that Mike is lying to her about when he's supposed to go on a vegetarian diet, child. So then it was time to get a root beer float. She says, a uh, beer? She says, no, no, this is beer. This is alcoholic. Mike said, no, it ain't. She said, yes, it is. Mike said, no, it ain't. She said, yes, it is. Mike said, no, it ain't. It ain't now. It's root. I ain't gonna lie to you. Go ahead and suck it down. So then she was like, I believe that it's beer. <laughs> so Mike is like, listen, she's going to have to trust me. Okay. She's going to have to trust me. I ain't lying to her. Okay. She's going to have to trust me. And she's going to have to quit doubting me. Child, that whole thing was a mess. I just wanted to see the food, child. Because it looked delicious. Let's move on. All right. Let's talk about Tariq and Hazel. I think they have, um, they got a name called, uh, what's it called, Tarzel? <laughs> Tariq and Hazel. Tarzel, is that what it is? But anyway, child Hazel, she's, you know, getting, you know, situated here in Virginia Beach in America. And honey, Tariq is happy, child. So it's time to give her a traditional American breakfast, okay? She used to eat rice. Okay, she used to eating something totally different than here in America. So, here comes Tariq taking her to a little uh, mom and pop restaurant, child. And when I tell you that food, honey, this was the food episode. Honey, those chicken and waffles. <laughs> I would, it would stand a chance. If those chicken and waffles was in front of me, wouldn't stand a chance. I would devour them. 
Did you see how good? Oh my god. So good. So it looked delicious. So of course, she's like, oh Lord, I'm not used to this. You know, with the eggs and the bacon and the chicken and the waffles and the fresh toast, child. So he was like, what do you think about it? What do you think? And she was like, it's sweet. <laughs> and I can understand that because she comes from the Philippines, which, you know, I'm sure their eating habits is completely different from, you know, our eating habits. You, you always hear about, you know, the people who come from another country, they always talk about the, you know, our portion size. <laughs> They're like, it sure is big. Natalie said it. Yara said it. Now, um, Hazel said it. These, these portions, I'm, I'm going to get fat. Julia said it. I guess over in different countries, you know, they eat small, small portions. <laughs> over here, honey, you get the whole pig, cow, deer, a uh, whale. You eat all of it. Okay, so... Hazel said, Lord, I'm going to get up here and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get chubby. I'm going to get fat. <laughs> so, marriage, wedding come up. And they talk about that. And so, um, Hazel says that she would like to get married in a church. Now, we know how that went the last time Tariq went to that church, child. Honey, Tariq didn't know what to think about that Filipino church, child. Honey, they were screaming. They was yelling. They were on their hands and knees. They were shaking, honey. They were speaking in a Honey, they were speaking in all kinds of tongues, honey. Sixteen tongues. Tariq was standing there like, oh, oh my Lord. Y'all, I remember years ago, I went to a church, and that was the first time I had ever heard someone speak tongue. And I was thinking to myself, now what is going on here? What are they talking to? <laughs> that shit is like a shaka la la la. Therese said, honey, that broke me, child. I don't want to go to another Filipino church. But... Hazel says, my parents would expect me to get married in a church. Tariq said, listen, your parents ain't here, okay? Your parents are not here, okay? Now, there's a, you know, a um, place, a spiritual place that I want to take you to. And this is where I want to have, you know, the wedding, okay? I guess, you know, it's one of these uh, meditative places, you know, uh, uh, I really don't know how to describe it, a spiritual building. So, they get over there, and Tariq is, you know, showing her around, and Hazel is looking like, uh-uh. You can tell from jump, Hazel is not comfortable with this spiritual you know, build what did he what is the name of it? Is A R E or A E R something like that? Honey, Tariq was pumped. He was like, look at this. You can lay down right here. You see this little bed? You can lay down right here. See, meditate. See, they got a whole a whole section where it's a meditation. You just go in here and meditate, child. Hazel is like, uh-huh. Nah. So they go outside and it was this configuration and it had these bricks and you have to follow the bricks and so Hazel is walking around and he's like what is this he said you getting it you feel comfortable Hazel said no I don't feel comfortable what is this this is weird I'm just walking around this circle this is odd this is weird I'm not feeling it and so Tariq was like don't worry about it <laughs> get to feeling it because see I went to your Filipino church where y'all almost scared me to death see this place is peaceful is quiet okay this is where i want us to get married and of course hazel mm -mm. hazel's not feeling it y'all but see there's another little thing that hazel's worried about hazel is also worried about meeting Tariq's daughter because Tariq's daughter is high functioning autistic and so 
It's gonna, it's gonna take a little bit. Tariq has already told us that it takes a whole lot of patience, you know, to, um, to be a parent to, you know, his daughter. So, you know, this is her first time meeting Hazel, and so, honey, good luck, Hazel. Good luck. I give props to any parent. Any teacher that have to deal with, you know, a child who has special needs and, you know, a high functioning, you know, autism is something that I know it, it just takes a lot. And he has says, honey, patience, patience, patience. And I will always give Tariq a round of applause with how he, you know, is um, raising his daughter. I, I really, really do. That is something that he should be proud of, child. And honey, we will see next week because, honey, Hazel, it's time to meet the daughter. Let's move on. All right, let's talk about Jovi and Yara. As y'all know, honey, rug gate. Honey, they got into a full-blown argument over a rug. So guess what came, y'all? The rug. Yay! How did they know all that rug from Amazon, child? And it has finally came. The rug is nice. It is a white, you know, like fur-type rug. Okay, she says, well, I thought, you know, it would be bigger. Girl, just take the rug, child. So then she was like, ah, 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 take your shoes off. Okay, you see how pretty this rug is? What color is this rug? Take your shoes off. That's what you do. So he was like, oh, Lord. And she was like, he was like, ain't no rush. She said, uh-uh, you been walking around the piss stained New Orleans. Take your shoes off. <laughs> Joe, because talking about don't nobody pee in New Orleans in the, on the, on the uh, sidewalks. That's a lie. Because, honey, when I was there doing Mardi Gras, I smelt it. I smelt urine. Maybe that was just Mardi Gras, child, but, honey, it was strong. So, anyway, so he takes his shoes off, and she was happy with the rug. And so he says, listen, we've been fussing, we've been fighting, y'all is down. I'm going to be gone for a month. Let me get her a gift. So he got her in, uh, the new iPhone. And child, honey, that frown that she had on her face, it turned upside down. She was like, yes, honey, iPhone alert. Uh, uh, iPhone alert. <laughs> honey, they was taking pictures, video. She was happy. Okay, she was happy at that moment. Okay, so... Jovi had did something pretty good, but, honey, that didn't last long. Now, it was time for them to go to dinner, okay? And I want to say this, y'all, honey, y'all, what outfit you had on, I'm going to need the details. Did y'all see y'all, honey, she had that jacket over her shoulder. Had on them cute little shorts, a little shirt to me. I said, y'all, you better walk, Okay? That's how you do it. Get it together, y'all. I said, I need that outfit, honey. All of it. Okay? And honey, she walked in. She had that jacket. And Jovi pulled that chair out. And Yara was like this. I said, Yara. Now, Yara, you getting on my nerves with all the complaining. But your fashion, honey, the first thing was that jacket. And this little outfit was cute. I was like, you better sit there. D <laughs> so y'all and Joby, they get to talking. And Joby knows that it's time for him to leave. Four weeks at home, four weeks away. But he was like, listen, you know, you won't be by yourself. You can always contact my mom. And, you know, you, you can find something to do. And, of course... You know, Yara is like, no, you know, you're going to be gone. I don't have anybody to talk to. I don't have any friends. You know, you're going to be, you know, gone. And so he was like, well, you can talk to, you know, my mom. And she was like, I really don't want to do that because your mom is going to try to have me do stuff. <laughs> he was like, well, you don't want to do anything. My mom ain't going to make you do anything. Just to hang out, just to talk. So Yara, she ain't feeling it, child. 
So then she gets upset. And she starts talking about her miscarriage. And she said that when she had her miscarriage, Jovi left. When he left, you know, she had to have surgery. Now, he left for work. Now, Jovi said, now, wait a minute, that's not the whole story. Yes, I left you. I had to go to work. But you couldn't come with me because you lost your passport. You lost your passport. And so, Yara, apparently there was some type of miscommunication about where they were. Were they in Albania? Was they in Croatia? It was just all kinds of miscommunication. Yara said that Joby was lying. And Joby was like, no, I, I'm not. So, they were going back and forth. Yara done got to crying. And she said, you left me. I had a miscarriage. Okay, I was carrying your child and you left me alone. And then I had to have surgery and you left me alone. She said, how can I ever trust you after that? Who does that? And honey, Joby was sitting there like this. <laughs> I was like, oh, Joby. <laughs> Joby was like, well. Jovi said that he cannot believe that she has, you know, had this resentment for a year and a half. He said, but I guess she knew because she's bringing it up now. A year and a half she has kept this in. Yara said it's going to be hard. It's hard trusting him. And now he's leaving her for four weeks. And she, he said, listen, he said, you knew this. I'll be gone for four weeks, but I will also be at home for four weeks. I mean, that's how I was raised. My dad did. I was with my mom, and I turned out great. We have a great, I have a great relationship with my family. And I'm going to have a great relationship with my kid. I would think that that would be good for the kid. I'm home for four weeks at a time. Y'all are still crying, child. Joby just sitting over there looking at her. <laughs> a mess. Oh. Child, when he leaves, are they going to show Yara the whole time not doing nothing? Crying and what, child? I guess. Let's move on. Last and certainly least, honey. Brandon and Julia, child. Oh, McDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O, and on that farm we had a Julia, E-I-E-I-O, with an oink oink here and an oink oink there, here oink there, oink everywhere, oink oink, oh, McDonald had a, come on, E-I-E-I-O, <laughs> it's time for Julia to work on that farm, honey, see, Julia isn't used to getting up at 6.30 in the morning to feed no pig. Or no chickens, or no goats, shoveling, doo doo. See, uh, uh. See, she used to go in the bed at six thirty in the morning when she, you know, out there on that floor dancing. See, she'll go go dance, go go dancing. Did y'all see? Oh, uh, Julia up on that floor, honey. She was tearing that floor up. <laughs> See her at a rave, child. <laughs> Get the glow sticks. Honey, Julia was tired it up. See, Julia used to that. She ain't used to the country life, so it's time for her to get up there. She didn't get up till about 12 o'clock. Now, we have, what's her name? Aspen. Aspen, Aspen, whatever. See, everybody going to work. The mama, the daddy, and Brent. See, they have to work. Okay, Julia, you can't be staying in bed till noon. They going to work. So it's time for you to go to work. So she gets up around 12, child, and it's time, honey. <laughs> she was getting those eggs and she was like, ah! Oh, my God! <laughs> and so ask whoever that girl's name is. She was like, girl, honey, them chickens are more scared of you than you of them. She was like, grab my egg and put that in that pail and let's go. They already six hours. They hungry. Julia was like, I hate this. She was like, I hate it. 
So honey, it was time to feed the goats and the chickens and honey, it was time to feed those hogs, child. And honey, Aspen said, get on in there now. Get on in there. You can do it, put your back into it. You can do it, put your back into it. <laughs> See, the same way you cut up on them dance floors, cut up in that pig pen. <laughs> So Julia, she goes in there with the, you know, feed, honey, and them hogs are like, <sighs> see, they hungry. So she was putting the feed down, and she was like, oh my God, pee. <laughs> so the animals finally get fed. So it's nighttime. Brandon comes walking in. Now Julia is in her room, honey. She tired. She's exhausted, honey. They don't work her child. Brandon comes home, honey, he didn't even go and greet her. He didn't kiss her, he didn't say, hey, kiss my ass, nothing. He went straight to his room. Julia said, Ha 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 ha! 
every bone in her body. <laughs> See, after I'm done with her, she gonna need extra milk. <laughs> Pop Pop said I can show you better than I can tell you, huh? I was like, you better do it, Pop Pop. So, of course, they go on and on about that. And then it's time for Pop Pop to insert himself. Pop Pop said, when y'all get married? When is the wedding date? I said, oh, Lord, here we go, child. And so Julia and Brandon said, May the 9th. Red alert. There's a flag on the play. Red flag. Alert, alert, alert. Alarm's going off. Oh, hell no. May it not. Oh, God. <laughs> of all days. Y'all going to get married on May the 9th. And honey, when I tell you, Papa and Mama Brandon had a fit. Mama Brandon said, I know not. Did, wait a minute. Did she say May 9th? May 9th? Wait, wait, wait a minute. That's Mother's Day. That's my day. You want to get married on my day? My special day? Oh, no. Y'all going to have to change that day. And honey, Julia said, now, wait a minute. May the 9th, our anniversary. I ain't changing no day. And then Brandon, honey, Brandon got him a set of cojones, honey. Brandon said, it's our day. This is the day Julia picked. This is the day Julia won't. And this is the day we're going to get married. And I was like, oh. I was like, okay, Brandon. Okay. All right. See, Brandon said what he said. Brandon said this is when we're going to get married. You got her out here in this pig pit. You got her out here at 6 30 in the morning. You got her out here feeding chickens. This is our wedding day. Whether you like it or not. And honey, when I tell you Papa Brandon said, well, I don't think that's a very good day. That is a terrible day to get married. And then Mama Brandon went, thank you. to get married on that day let them get married on that day yes it's mother's day oh well okay that's when they want to get married that's their day and if i'm not mistaken then Ju julia did say that's their anniversary right it don't matter if it's not their anniversary or not that is when they want to get married let them get married on whatever day they want to get married i think brandon know what he doing Brandon's like, now see, it's Mother's Day. Let me see if I can stick it to her just a little bit. <laughs> Honey, when I tell you, they threw a fit. I totally agree with Brandon and Julia on this. Okay. They should be able to pick whatever day they want to get married. And if it's May the 9th, let it be May the 9th. Now, let me ask y'all something. For the mothers out there. If you have a son or a daughter and they choose that day to get married, would you be upset over it? Be honest. Is it your day? Okay, so anyway, child, that's it. That is it for 90 Day Fiance. Y'all know what to do. Leave your comments down below. And don't forget to hit that like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, friends, bye!